they'll be cheering and shouting when we make land. No thinking of Nelly, dear. We're saucy, bright sailors with pockets of gold, and we're roaring the raptors with cheer. She bore down from the windward for more than a day when we saw the black color she wore. While well, our captain said, boys, we're in for a fight, but none of our rigging is torn. And it's heave-ho, and away we go, and the Goldens we're making our way. And the good ship is rolling and tossing and turning, and we're bound for Bengal Bay. Boys, we're bound for Bengal Bay. Well, we trimmed her up. And we pointed her well, and the sea did part for our way. While the bullships are strong, and we'll soon be of song, cause we'll lose her at the end of the day. As the angry sea rolls and the sailor does pine, we think of our loves once again. While the days are much shorter, but the nights linger on, but we're on our way back home. And it's he. We're making our way And the good ship is rolling and tossing and turning But we're bound for Bengal Bay Boys, we're bound for Bengal Bay What will be paid when our good ship returns back home? We'll wash up the tar and shine up, dear lads, with our sweethearts fair London will roll. And it's heave-ho, and away we go, in the doldrums we're making our way. And the good ship is rolling and tossing and turning, but we're bound for Bengal Bay. Boys, we're We're making our way And the good ship is rolling and tossing and turning But we're bound for Bengal Bay Boys, we're bound for Bengal Bay Oh man, wow, what an awesome song that is, Bengal Bay And you know, it's with huge gratitude that I thank Mike Tidwell and the 5 Second Rule Band Who gave us permission to use the song Well, so, hi everybody Welcome to MP, your friendly catamaran. Now for those following us, you will know that we are sailing down the east coast of Australia, having last visited Moreton Island, which is in the vicinity of Brisbane, well, in a beautiful place called Tangaluma. Well now we are sailing across the bay to a place called Scarborough.
is coming closer The flames are licking my body Won't you help me? I feel I'm slipping away It's out of breeze My chest is a heaving Lord of mercy I'm burning where I lay Your kisses lift me higher Like a sweet song of the choir You light my mind Back in New Caledonia, Anna and I had attended a talk by John Hembrow, the Down Under Rally Group, Go East and Go West. You guys should check this out. Definitely worth your while to check this out. We heard a delightful presentation by Richard, who is the Scarborough Marina Manager and decided to stay here for a while. Now the marina is a great place to stop over. For a boat our size the fee is around $50 per day and the standard additional 1.5 times fee for a catamaran is around $75 per day. Being part of the rally group sees one getting a decent fee. Tracy who assists Richard managed to, uh, to arrange a rental car for us along with a suitable discount. This makes for a great stopover to restock the boat and sort out some maintenance issues. We became aware of these incredibly friendly leopard catamaran agents, Rod and Mark, who will stalk you down for no other reason than to provide you with a smile and some gifts. Well, great people these are. Top tip, the more often you walk past the front door, the more gifts you are likely to get. This was our favourite routine. Two leopard caps, yeah. then you buy one. So we're only going to give you one of these, okay, so that's, and then one of ours. So this is for your monoholes? <laughs> Carrying all our shopping down to the boat. Barber is no exception to the rule. We often get folks from our social media coming to greet and welcome us in person when MP arrives in marinas. While well, Australians are incredible people. Some of the friendliest in the world. Hey man, I've, I've got to tell you guys now, hey, we, we're sitting here on MP, we're in Australia as you guys know, and we've met Dave Dave. He's a guy who's followed us and communicated with us, and... Hi everyone, pleased to meet you all. There's Dave Dave, man, and his son Aaron. G'day guys. Aaron, what are you doing? You're doing like bobsledding and stuff now, eh? Yeah, starting a... Starting a a personal training and te corporate team building business around around push bobsledding. It's pretty unique in Australia. The country, the lack of ice means they're still on their training wheels. Brisbane has a bobsled team. Set, set, set. Aaron Simpson Woods and Rob Stewart are training to make the cut for the World Junior Bobsled Championships in America in February. But in suburbia, bitumen replaces ice. This is awesome, man. I've actually asked Aaron to please send me some of this footage when he gets it going because I think this is really neat. He's got some really cool ideas, man. And Aaron, you're going to send us some of this stuff. For sure, for sure. And we are going to share this with you guys, man. You need to keep an eye on this guy, eh? Right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I like it, man. There we go. What do you say, love? Go for it. Go for it. <laughs> go for it. Go for it guys, that's what it's all about man. Positive vibes. We had a tremendous evening with these folks, found it very interesting chatting to Dave and Aaron about his life experience, some awesome ideas around team building. The man takes us seriously, he's passionate about it and we hope many folks in Australia will seize the opportunity he offers. Check him out on Facebook guys, Aaron Simpson Woods. Defeat heat and humidity. Their dream was to compete in the Olympics. I saw cool runnings when I was six, back in 1993, and I thought that that was cool. Pushman Rob Stewart has never been on a real bobsled course. This is definitely a new realm heading onto ice. Um, it'll be a different experience and uh, see, see what an Australian can do on there. 
To get the dream on track, the pair undergo hours of endurance training. We just do what we can while uh, we're out here in Australia. Um, we just concentrate a lot on our uh, weight uh, training and developing a lot of power. And mostly, they're on their own. There's no, no, no false locations anywhere in the country. So it's pretty much we make it up as we go. Which means being innovative. The starting blocks are normally set in ice, but toolboxes also do the job. Okay, moving along. Renting a car was necessary. Our new GoPro 4 Hero Black was suffering from short battery life and overheating. What a disappointment. Well, GoPro agreed to repair it, meaning we had to send it to Singapore using a UPS courier. Not so easy to find. Well, the courier advised they were shipping around 10 GoPro cameras, Hero 4s, per week back to Singapore for the same problem. Yeah, it uh, looks like Camps Bay to me. Looks like Camps Bay back in South Africa type of feeling. Yeah. Well, when we're down on the beach. Yeah. It, it has got a little beach, but. Yeah. But it's nice to have all the trees. Very cool. And what do they call this place again? Redcliffe or? Redcliffe, yeah. I guess the, the cliffs are below here. Yeah. Shared zone, I don't know what that means. It means you want to stop for pedestrians. Oh, we. Okay. Clever girl. You know, when it's not a shared zone, you can just drive right over them. <laughs> Provided free of charge to the public. I mean, how cool is now, that? Now, Australia is certainly a first world country and a classy one at that. Well, we see so many beautiful facilities being offered free of charge to the public. It, it's not something that we are accustomed to where we come from. Well, people in Australia can certainly be proud of the society that they have created for themselves and for folks who visit these beautiful shores. Well done, Australia. Now, the town has amazing sites of interest and things to do. We loved walking along Heritage Walk here. It starts at a museum, includes some interesting sites of the original penal colony. Well, the Redcliffe jetty seen in the background is where the stores and main landing place used to be located. So Scarborough is a great place to restock the boat. As Australia goes, it's good value for money. But the real reason we came to Moreton Bay area was not to sail into Scarborough. It was to sail up into Anna's favourite city in the world, Brisbane. Many sailors tell us they do not venture up the river to Brisbane. They simply pass it by. They say, after all, it's a river. You know, one has to negotiate huge ships, ferries, and other vessels alike. But Anna has fond memories of the city, and we decide to seek out a spot to drop anchor at night, right in the city center, as it were.
right. Well, it felt to us that from the river entrance and leading up to this particular bridge, the feeling we got is heavy industrial, together with a lot of heavy industrial activity. <laughs> well, passing under the bridge, one sort of gets a feeling of, uh, well, people living on their boats, they work boats, um, kind of like industrial areas, shipping, uh, but new buildings being developed in between, a little higgledy-piggledy, but a great feeling of uh, the place just developing and improving all the time. Now, of course, as one gets closer to Brisbane city centre, well, the buildings become more and more impressive along the riverbank. I, I was feeling a sense of awe by all of this. Just so much activity, boats, barges, buildings, and, and you know, a lot of history to this too. Um, the wool stores here are one of um, the impressive things. I mean, this is a 1933 Goldsboro Mort and Company Limited four-story brick and timber structure. Uh, well, wool was moved here by rail. Now, as one can see, the area is now developed as new apartments line the river. This area is known as Tenerife. You know, a man called James Gibson, who was uh, the first landowner in the area, named it this way because it reminded him of Tenerife Peak and Tenerife the Canary Islands. Well, by the 1880s, residential development expanded, industry and transport along with it. In the late 19th century, as dredging of the Brisbane River began, well, larger ships came upstream and the area converted into industrial buildings. Uh, now, a fella called Adel Getty, who speculated in gold as well as wool, built the first of the Tenerife Wharfs here in 1907. He also provided wool um, growers with finance, transport, storage, insurance, technical advice and wool sales and so on. Uh, well, during the First World War, hospital ships for wounded soldiers birthed at Del Getty's Wharf. And during this time, uh, more wool sheds were built. Now, in the Second World War, the Navy took these stores and their wharves as a base for its submarines. And, you know, the residents fled the area as they feared bombing in this location. So some 800 or so Americans stayed here for a year, becoming very popular with the local community. Now, later on, the wool was being transported closer to the river mouth of Brisbane, and the wool stores and wharves became redundant. Today... The um, the whole area, the wharves are developed with residential buildings and the stores are converted into beautiful apartment blocks. Incredible history behind this. What is that thing? Okay, well I'm finding this very interesting. I think it's beautiful to sail into a city like this. We're on a river and um, yeah man, it's, it's incredible. It's, it's just like, it's almost like being in fairyland here. You don't want to believe what you're actually seeing. Hello Brisbane, we have come to visit you. What an interesting cruise up this river, man. Now that bridge is 30 meters high. Yeah, it's always an optical illusion. We're never happy going under these things until we've been under them already. Um, but there we go. And at least the tide is down a bit, it should give us extra clearance, so maybe we'll be in the Brisbane news tomorrow. Catamaran takes down bridge. <laughs> Anna's saying don't make jokes like this Brent. Oh, this is the story bridge. Ah, this is called the story bridge. Um, we'll have to see. Richard was saying we can't get under that, but... Uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure we can get under this. I wonder why he said we can't get under this. He's a local guy. Well, we won't be showing this video footage if uh, something goes wrong. Is it okay, Brent? It looks fine. 
You sure? Looks good. They're saying 30 meters, right? Well, that's what they're saying, but it, it, I don't know, Bryn. Oh. There we go. Yeah, it's gonna go. Well, our backyard for a few days. We've chosen to have a different view and there it is, Brisbane. Oh, let's take a seat here. Hey love, where's my glass of wine man? Where's my wine? <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> look at our backyard here, look. <laughs> huh? What is that? That ancient Roman thing there. Yeah, that old building over there amongst all of these modern buildings. What a view from our patio, huh? Just our luck, we've arrived here in Brisbane and we're in a storm. Wow! Don't have the GoPro picks it up, lots of lightning, lots of rain, the river's running. Uh, this is cool, eh? Right in the middle of the city. Let's get this lightning if we can. No, I don't want to film it. Because it was it was reflecting of that gold building. Ooh. We're making steaks. Mm -hmm. Oh lovely. First class Australian tea bone. Wow, it looks good. And some nice salad. Mm -hmm.
It certainly has already gone through, Eva. At the moment, what you can see is a light bit of mist, but 10 to 15 minutes ago, it was a completely different story. The sky over Brisbane was entirely black as the CBD. Oh.